The situation in Israel just took another potentially dangerous turn. The Israeli military confirming it launched airstrikes in Gaza against the terror organization Hamas. So how will Hamas retaliate? The strikes were reportedly in response to several cross-border attacks by terrorists in Gaza. We're told gunmen sprayed bullets at an Israeli home. Fortunately, nobody was injured there. And as you know, the violent protests in Gaza exploded on Monday when the U.S. officially opened its embassy in Jerusalem. Militant groups have promised vengeance. So will things get worse before they get better? Let me ask New York Republican Congressman Lee Zeldin. He was also present at Monday's unveiling of our new embassy in Jerusalem. Welcome back to the show. It's good to be back. So let's talk a little bit about this. You have a very economically uh, depressed area where Hamas has been in control for quite some time. And they embed their militant Islamists with women and children and innocents. So when Israel retaliates, there are civilian casualties. So is Hamas responsible for some of those deaths that we heard about on Monday? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you have, I mean, Israel has a responsibility to protect its border. A nation will do that. Uh, here you happen to have an element that will not rest until Israel's wiped off the map with regards to Hamas. You have a situation where several tens of thousands of people were trying to storm the border. And just on the other side of the border, you have villages where Israeli women, children, and men are living. So if you do not deal with that situation on the border, then you're going to have close combat with Israeli civilians. So there's no choice for Israel but to defend its border. And Hamas is the one mobilizing tens of thousands of people. They're the ones in charge of Gaza, and they're the ones in charge of ruining Gaza and the quality of life for everyone who lives there. So why can't they get rid of them? Why can't they get rid of Hamas? Mm -hmm. Well, there's, you know, as far as Hamas's ranks uh, inside of Gaza, uh, Gaza is very densely populated. You don't have military uh, occupations and operations to actually take over Gaza. Uh, so short of that, uh, you start doing proportionality analysis. Now, while the United States and Israel and other countries uh, may look at whether or not the force used, uh, it, the military advantage outweighs the collateral damage. We do that test. Uh, others don't. Uh, obviously, Hamas doesn't. Uh, but, you know, Israel isn't going to just wipe Gaza off the map because they want to take out Hamas. Now, if anyone thinks that the Palestinian Authority and Mahmoud Abbas has control over Gaza, it's been 12 years since the last time he was there. So this yeah. is really Hamas's doing and all of their their troubles with electricity and water and education it's a no mess. it's it's a really rough place to live and it's not surprising that this brand of terror proliferates there uh, the president has said that he very much wants to see peace between israelis and palestinians does moving the american embassy to jerusalem put a roadblock uh in the peace process absolutely not and Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. The president wasn't just fulfilling his own campaign promises or the campaign promises of all the presidents in the past. It's just the right thing. It is the capital of Israel. That's a reality. Now, one of the challenges, and this president, and I've spoken to him, I've met with him about this particular, he is serious about it. He wants to be as helpful uh, as possible. This needs to be negotiated, though, on the ground between Israelis and Palestinians. One of the challenges you face is it's not just two parties. It's not just the Israelis sitting down with the Palestinian Authority. Yeah. Because if the Palestinian Authority were to sign a document in good faith and agree, the reality is that their ranks are filled with the likes of Hamas that won't rest unless Israel's wiped off the map. So who is Israel negotiating with? If Israel so does that mean that we're deal, never going to see peace? I think it's very difficult for it to happen right now. That doesn't mean that at some point in the future, and I don't know if that's you know, a few years down the road where the stars are on, hey, yeah. look at North Korea. Where this time last year, if we predicted that we'd be in this place, possibly May, June of 2018, uh, we, you know, you'd have trouble saying that with a straight face. Uh, but the stars were aligned in such a way where I, hopefully I this summer I still think we have not was. figured out a way to uh, combat philosophically Islamism. We, we just have not figured that out. I, I think the, the free market uh, breathes opportunity into every other dark corner of the globe, but we have not solved this Rubik's Cube 
And hey, I'm optimistic we can find some answer somehow. Congressman, thank you very much for your time. It sounds Could like they're you. dismantling your building. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.